Good morning, everybody. This is Becky. So today I just want to go over what the dental scan is like. And I just want you to know there is a lot of information that your teeth reveal about you, your emotions, and your health. So if you're interested in understanding maybe where to start in your healing journey, uh, maybe what emotions are showing up in different parts of your body, you know, this is this is the report that can do this. So I'm going to kind of show you how I cross-reference and go through everything in the dental scan. So this is our test profile. And I just literally scanned and optimized the dental. So there are two ways that you can look at this. We have the image report here. For me, I like to look at the table report. And what I'm looking for are areas where there's just lots of congestion. There's lots of red showing up. So I'm just gonna make some notes as I go through this. So we have tooth number eight. We've got seven, six, five looks pretty good. Definitely four, there's two areas coming up. Number three. Thirty-two for sure. And then we got 31 and 30. So you can kind of also see how a lot of times they're grouped together. 29, 27, 26. Some adrenal stuff going on. We've got 10. Definitely 14. You can see how many markers are showing up in that 14, uh, 15, 16. So this is kind of like my first pass at seeing where do I need to start with all these teeth? What is going on? 18, 21 and 22, we'll just write it down, see if it comes up again, 23. So you can see how they're all clustered. And then 24. So the ones that are standing out right now are 4, 32, 14, 16, and 24. So those are ones that I really need to keep my eye on. The others are potentially just low-hanging fruit. So where do we go from here? We already have an idea that there's one, two, three, four, five teeth that we need to focus on. So I'm gonna go back into dental and open up the database because we've already done the report. Now this is where you can filter again. So I look at by term first, why? Because you'll see here by term, the numbers are the amount of hits. So how many times is this showing up somewhere in the body? So if we look here, tooth or a uh, cervical disc C2 is showing up six times. That's more hits than the four. So from a priority standpoint, because again, we want to figure out where do we need to start right now? And I'm not saying that lumbar disc L3 isn't important, just as a priority and a hierarchy, there are six hits. So six different areas that cervical disc C2 is showing. So I'm going to click on that. And then this shows me all the different teeth. So 31, 25, 9, 14, 16, 21. Let's see, does that show up? 31, yes. So I'm going to write C2. How about 25? No. How about 9? No. 14? Well, 14 was one of those hot spots. That was one of those top five. 16 and then 21. And again, 16 was another one. And then again, you can see, you know, if it's low cause, which is typically going to be, you know, chronic, something that's been going on for quite some time versus high cause is going to be something a little more recent or it's acute. You can see the percentage of how it's affecting the body and then how many years this has been going on. Next category. These are all fours. I'm going to come back to that because I'm really looking for high cause. So here we've got six hits in the right breast, six hits in the left foot. 
I'm going to click on that. And again, I'm going to go through the same procedure. So tooth number four, that had a lot of hits. 32, that had a lot of hits. 31, again, that came up again. 29, one hit for that. 17 and then 20, 17 was not on and 20 was not on. Okay, let's go to the left foot. We've got dental nine, that's not a problem. 11, 20, 22, so you can right, see there 22, 23, and 24. 22, which again, all three of them, particularly 24, was an issue. So I kind of just make my way through and do the exact same thing. We've got in pathology, here's six hits. Tooth number one, 31. 31 has another hit. 30, same thing. And then you can see again, 24, 25, and 26. 24, 25, and 26. So we're starting to gather some information here. And da, 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 what's down here? We've got viral toxicity has five hits. So tooth number three, virus, 32, that came up again, 29, that came up again, 13, not coming up, and then 22. Okay, so Based off of that information, we know which teeth are problematic, 4, 32, 14, 16, 24. We know some of the corresponding areas so far. We've got the right breast. We've got some viral load. We've got um, carido, acinote, whatever that is. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. I will go research that later. And then we've got left foot, and we've got the cervical C2. So that's kind of the body parts right now that we know we need to pay attention to. That being said, we're going to go into by group. And now I'm going to look at these specific teeth. So tooth number four kept coming up. So here we go. And now I'm going to look for high cause, things around 90%, because I want to focus. And there isn't anything in that tooth. Let's go to tooth 32. Same thing, high cause. So here is a high cause 90%. And again, you can see right breast is coming up again. So again, this is what I always talk about when you start seeing trends and patterns. 31, you're gonna start seeing the same stuff reappearing somehow. So we want to filter, 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 filter. High cause, 90%. Looks like there's some gum recession. In tooth 31. And then let's do 30, because some stuff popped up in there. And not a boatload showing up in that tooth. Let's go to 29. Again, high cause. Okay, not seeing anything there. 14 had a lot of hits. Again, not seeing a boatload showing up again in there. Let's go to 16. I cause 92% lymphoma. And then last but not least, We've got basically 21, 22, 23, and 24 in some fashion. 
And nothing there. Nothing there. 23. And then let's look at 24. So lumbar instability, high cause 92. So that's back, back instability. So that could have something to do with the left foot, because if you are a DNA student, um, you will start to understand how the feet have a direct correlation to the pelvic floor and core and breathing stability. So there should be, might be a connection there. And then there's another myoma. And that's tooth 24. So it looks like, looks like 24 has quite a bit going on. And then 31 and 32. So if we look at tooth 32 has right breast and virus, 31 has cervical spine, right breast, some OMA and gum recession. And then number 24 has an OMA, lumbar stability, and another OMA. So I would say tooth 24 is a big issue. Tooth 16 is a big issue. And then definitely 31. So now I've got three, 31, 16, 24, 08, and 29. They have more than one hit. The rest just have one hit. So next, I cross-reference that information with these charts. So the first one is the organ tooth chart. So what did we say? Tooth number 32. So let's look at 32 on this chart. That's right here. So we've got heart, small intestine, and the endocrine gland and pericardium. So again, these are other areas I can look at in the AO scan. So I'm going to write here for tooth 32, we've got heart, which we can do cardiovascular in body systems. We've got basically digestive or specifically small intestine if you're doing comprehensive. And then the endocrine. Okay, you see what I just did there? Tooth 31, we've got lungs and large intestine. So again, digestion. These are areas I can go focus on in comprehensive and body systems. Number 29, we've got stomach and pancreas. So are you starting to see a trend? We've got a lot of gut and digestive stuff. And then 16, it's up over here. Oh, and look at that. We've got heart, small intestine, endocrine again. So heart endocrine and gut. So it's showing up again. And then we've got tooth number 24, which is right here. These are usually all your kidney and adrenals. So kidneys, prostate, bladder, uterus, rectum, anus, adrenals. So 24, I'm just gonna put adrenals, kidneys. Okay. So now I know the systems that I need to pay attention to are the adrenals, kidneys, the endocrine system, gut, heart, and lungs. So those are systems that I could go back, cross-reference if I haven't, if I did scan already. If not, I would scan those in body systems and comprehensive. Again, open up the database, cross-reference. Am I seeing the same stuff showing up? An excess viral load. Am I seeing things in the cervical spine vertebrae? How about the left foot? How about the right breast? You know, what am I starting to see over and over again? Is there stuff going on in the lymphatics? The next chart 
because now I want to know what emotions. So we've got number 32. So you can see right here, 32 and 31 are problematic. So come over here and we've got 31 and 32. So lung and large intestine, same thing that showed up before. What are the emotions? We've got chronic grief, overcritical, sadness, feeling trapped, uptight. Are these emotions showing up on inner voice or body systems? If we look at tooth number 29, we've got stomach. So again, that same system's coming up again. Correlating emotions, anxiety, self-punishment, broken power, hatred, low self-worth, and obsession. Are these emotions showing up? Do we need to prioritize the emotions? What do we need to do? So we're narrowing down into, do we have an emotional aspect? It's, if so, what emotions? What are the ones that keep coming up? Is this a structural issue? Do we need to address the lumbar spine? Do we need to address the cervical spine vertebrae? Do we need to address the, le the left foot? Or is this more physiological where we need to address the gut and the endocrine and the liver and lungs? If we look at tooth 24, so we've got number 24 is right here, kidneys and bladder. Same thing, fear, shame, and guilt, deep exhaustion. What, what is the person going through right now? So from an emotional standpoint, we have an idea of what is going on. So I want to send myself another chart. I should have done this before, but because I'm starting to see a pattern, there is stuff going on in the left foot. There is stuff going on as far as lumbar spine stability and cervical spine C2 keeps coming up. Now, in the world of applied kinesiology, there are some there is something called Lovett reactors. So I'm going to send myself this photo so that you guys understand what I mean because everything in the body is paired. This is one of the big things that we teach in DNA. So you can't release something else without activating something else or you know, think of like if you're doing polarity therapy, there's positive, negative, male, female, yin, yang. In um, Lovett reactors in the spine, things are always going to be paired. So I want to see what C2 pairs with, because it might be something in the lumbar spine. But before I do that, I also want to show you this. This is another chart that I use. So we can look at C2 because we know that's coming up. That requires 147 hertz. So if I had someone on the hub, I could add that frequency 147 hertz into where you can do customized frequencies. The, the C2 affects the eyes, ears, sinuses, tongue, forehead, mastoid bone. So again, are those things showing up? There is a lot when you look at the mouth, a lot of lymphatics and the brain drains through there. So this could be some of the stuff that we are seeing. Maybe they have some pain or tightness in the neck flexors or extensors. So in the front or the back of their neck. And then the emotions, refusal to understand, blame and denial. Are these things that are showing up in the inner voice report? Now, love it reactors because we already have been talking about C2. So we've got this handy chart. Let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. No, I can. So C2, oh yes, C2 is paired with lumbar four, L4. And lumbar instability has been coming up. So one of the things that we could do utilizing the DNA template is figuring out what the cause is, where it's coming from, if it's a priority, what the pair is. So we could assess, is there something going on with the relationship between C2 and L4? If so, yes. How do we work with that? Do we do a little something at C2 to affect L4 or vice versa? 
How does the diaphragm fit into all this? Because if you look at C2 and L4, the diaphragm is what holds all that together. We can also look at how the left foot is affecting the diaphragm and lumbar spine stability, because what happens at the feet is reflected in the rest of the body, especially the cranium and the jaw. So from a structural standpoint, I already have some ideas of things that I could potentially do just based off of that. From a physiological standpoint, we know there's stuff going on in the right breast. There's stuff going on with the digestive system, the endocrine system, lungs, adrenals, and kidneys. I could scan those areas in body systems and comprehensive and cross-reference with the information that I already have. What is going on? Do they have leaky gut? Do we need to get them to detox better? Are they just not detoxing and draining enough? And then from an emotional aspect, we've already got some top hits with some of the emotions like fear in the adrenals, um, anger and hatred in the gut and digestive system. Are those same emotions showing up in the inner voice reports and body systems? So this is a quick way that you can really assess what's going on with your health. You know, without doing a boatload of scans, you simply just do the dental scan and then you can keep cross-referencing with um, the stuff that I've showed you. And what we do then is we can create a, a very easy to read comprehensive report and kind of give you a starting point of where do you need to start with your health? Maybe we need to rebuild your foundations first. Maybe we need to get some minerals and amino acids in you and get you hydrated so that you can better detox. Maybe we need to do simple things such as staying in the sun for 10 to 15 minutes, grounding, doing some Vegas work, listening to inner voice more, or doing mind sync to help lower that nervous system load. That person's in fight or flight. Maybe they're super stressed. Giving them solutions and tools to be able to calm down and reset their nervous system. Maybe they need to learn how to diaphragm breathe, which can help not only the nervous system, but will also help that core that is holding the neck and the back together. So maybe we just need to increase some stability in those areas. So those are just some uh, key points. I just kind of wanted to go over what it looks like to have a dental scan. And again, if this is something that you'd like to do, please reach out. Um, we can definitely do this for you. I have quite a few practitioners that work with me. Um, that can get you this kind of simple report. Again, it's just usually like a one page, maybe a back of a report that kind of gives you a um, shotgun approach of like where you need to start and how you can start kind of helping yourself. Um, we do offer a discount for that. If you are someone who does not have the AOScan software, we will give you a reimbursement or a discount if you do sign up for the AOScan subscription. So um, I hope you all have a great day and I hope this super uh, short informative lesson really kind of hones in and helps you, even if you have the AO scan, where to start. Highly recommend getting one, highly recommend getting the dental done uh, because there's so much that happens in the mouth that literally reflects what else is going on in the body. So um, have a great day, everybody.